A few weeks ago, I spent some time on the beautiful island of Galimnos in Greece. And today I'm really stoked to share with you the images I captured from this trip. Now the photos I captured did come at a few costs, like my wallet going missing, my A7 IV taking a few tumbles, and even some Americans trying to play the ukulele in my hostel. The camera I brought along with me on this trip was the Fujifilm X-E4. I shot with the XF 23mm f2 and the 18-55mm to 55 millimeter pretty evenly throughout the trip. So in Galimnos, I was staying on a part of the island called Masuri. And Masuri is probably the most scenic because of all the mountains, and that's why it attracts a ton of rock climbers every year. But the first location I photographed was actually the area around my hostel because we we're in this beautiful spot right below the mountains, and there are a ton of cool little streets around me. Earlier that afternoon, I rented a scooter which made getting around the island so much easier and a lot more fun. So this was a great companion to have with me on this little photography trip. It was so tough riding around the island, not because of the people or the way Greeks drive, more so because I wanted to pull over all the time and stop and take photos. There was this one spot though that really took my eye. It was opposite this hotel. So I pulled over and had a really incredible view of the mountains and the water in front of it. At this stage, I had the 23 millimeter on my Fuji film. And so I decided to get a few shots just using that and not change over to the 18 to 55 right away. But all I did was stop up to about F8, F7.1. And that let me get a lot of the mountains in focus and capture some of those greater landscape shots. After getting these classic landscape shots, I got back on my bike and I actually ended up finding a nice bend in the road that I pulled over to try and channel my inner street photographer. The plan was to sit in a spot I liked and capture a moped or a motorbike driving by this composition I had set up. To be honest, it was so difficult. Like I have a really big appreciation for street photographers especially their patience. Even to get in a position I liked was a challenge. And then even once I was there waiting 15, 20 minutes for a photo to come by and missing a lot, there are a lot of times I had my shutter speed wrong, the subjects looked a bit weird, but after a while, I eventually got a few that I did like, but it did take quite a long time. To be honest, after my time here, I accepted that I'm not really a patient photographer that sits in one spot. So I hopped on my bike and I started exploring a little bit more. I also had this little feeling that I wasn't stoked with all the photos I was getting at the time. I think we as photographers know that like you might be on a shoot and you might be in a new place, but you just know that you're not getting those bangers or the ones that you really want right away. So in pursuit of these cash shots, I decided to keep exploring and I came across this beach, which had an epic vantage point to look down on it. If you've seen any of my work and a few of my past videos, you'd know that I love these positions where you can look down on a coastline and photograph the people on the sand. This place was no different, but in Greece, the sand is actually black and brown and it doesn't look that great. So I wasn't getting the colors I usually try and get. There was this one photo though, which is here. And I absolutely love this shot. I just love how this lady is perched up on her own little rock here and the colors look incredible. And I also just really like the styling, what she's wearing. Obviously it would have been great if she was, you know, like reading a book, doing a painting, but instead she was probably just scrolling TikTok, which is pretty indicative of the times we're in right now, but either way, I was still really happy with this composition. Whilst on this cliff though, I did also take the opportunity to get a few stills of the scooter. I rented the mighty 125 with the missing mirror. Like, I don't know why you'd want to look over your right shoulder while driving. There's no point really, it's just, you know, save some weight. But here the F2 on my 23 millimeter was great because it meant I could stop down and get a lot of depth in my shot. I took enough photos for this scooter to literally have its own campaign. So after getting the shots I wanted, I got back on the road and started driving to the other side of town. So as you can see, Missouri is shadowed by this massive rock. You can actually get a ferry over there in the afternoon. I didn't 
didn't get the chance to get over. But what it does mean is that the city does kind of go into this massive shadow for a little part of the sunset. And because I was on the other side of the village photographing the beaches, I had to drive to the other side to get any sort of sunset. By the time I arrived, I was in this beautiful vantage point with the perfect light. This wasn't planned, this was pure luck. I didn't even know I was gonna find this kind of spot, but because I was so high and elevated, it was here that I swapped on to the 18 to 55 millimeter to make sure I could get a shot of this big rock and also the town involved. This is certainly my favorite image from this first day. I just love how the highlights are hitting the side of the rock and also the mountains in the background, as well as the city. I think it's just a really clean looking image and I'm so stoked that I got to the other side of the big rock to photograph it. And also the colors in this shot really match up to my style and what I look for. But overall, this is definitely the favorite photo from the afternoon and so, Although I was feeling a little okay with the photos I was getting, by the time towards the end of the day at sunset, I did get this shot, which made me really happy. But this was day one and day two is where I really found my stride. So on my second day photographing the island, I decided to visit a different village called Panormos. Panormos was a buzzing place with a ton of Greek tourists and you know the place slaps when the locals are there. So I was really stoked I found this spot and got to explore it. Within the first 10 minutes of being on the beach in true Greek fashion, an old guy approached me and he actually told me that I'm photographing the wrong spot. He also told me that he was actually the first club promoter on the island. So I did feel pretty honored to be chatting to him, but he was kind enough to point out a few different spots that I could go and photograph. Now in the moment, and with the setting and him telling me that he did also love photography, I decided to ask if I could capture his portrait and he was kind enough to say yes, but I think it's really important to just ask people's permission to take their photo before you start snapping away. And also he was so stoked when I did ask, so he posed for me and he was so kind and you made a really good connection that way rather than just snapping away. But he did invite me to dinner at his house, but I didn't go there, that's a different story. But either way, I got this really good portrait that I was super happy with. So after saying our goodbyes, I decided to take his advice and I headed up this trail that he pointed out to me. Along the way up this trail was this beautiful blue and white church, really traditional and Greek looking. And by the time I got up here, there was also this incredible view of the coastline that I had started from. The church had this awesome courtyard that I tried to photograph the details in it. My 18 to 55 wasn't wide enough to be honest in this position, but I did manage to get a few shots and architectural style images of the church itself. After spending enough time at the church, I decided to head back down to the coastline and started looking for a lot of the photos that I usually look for when I'm photographing a coastline. I was looking for a lot of candid moments and people interacting with the coastline, kind of like a street photography approach, but on the water. While walking along the beach, I came across a few guys playing paddle and they were kind enough to let me photograph them. Like I was gonna sub in, put on a bit of a clinic, but I had all my kit with me, but I was just sitting back taking photos of them. Just after while I was on this spot at the beach, I noticed this lookout that you could get to from the other side of the coast. So I carried it on there and tried to get up that. It had a lot of potential and it looks like an old bunker that a lot of the Greek islands do have that had kind of been converted into a bit of a vantage point. By the time I got up there, I was blown away with the view. You had this insane bird's eye view of the beach, the mountains, and even the church that I started with. I made sure to pop the 18 to 55 back on to get this massive wide shot, but the 23 millimeter did really good. And when looking at the photos in post, I was a lot happier with the sharpness of the shots that came out from this one.
But to be honest, after snapping away at a few different compositions, I just had to sit and enjoy this place because the view from up here was mind blowing. I haven't been to an island so quiet, but so busy at the same time, if that makes sense. It felt like everyone on the island was in this one spot. It wasn't like Santorini or the bigger islands where there's a ton of tourists. There were just Greeks there on their family vacation and photographing it was such a privilege. And so that's what I mean when I say we take our best photos when we're photographing a place that we love or that means something to us. And I couldn't believe that more to be the case. So with that, what you can do if you do want to go out and take photos that you're more proud of and you have a lot more energy towards is to look for that thing that you love and start there. Photographing a place that means a lot to you is super important and valuable to you as an artist. These sorts of photography travel videos are what got me into YouTube and sharing my work here. So if you want to see a few more of the videos and places I've been, I'll leave some links around me and you can go check them out. Thank you.